Hello to all my students who aren't currently at school due to the events in the world right now. This is the first in a series of online virtual lessons that I'll be doing, uh, hopefully one a day so that you can still access education at home. So today's topic is all about cells. So first things first, we need to recap Mrs. Gren. All living things take part in Mrs. Gren. They do all seven of these life processes. I want you to pause the video here and write down for me these seven life processes. I'm sure some of you didn't pause it, but hopefully most of you did. Let's go through the answers. So for M, it's movement. R, respiration. S, sensitivity. G, growth. R, reproduction. E, excretion. And N is nutrition. They are the seven life processes, whether it's an animal or a plant, anything that is living will do all seven of these processes. Now, looking at cells, animal and plant cells in particular, most of you will be familiar with this. Maybe not all of the bits in these diagrams, but you don't need to know all of them. This is an animal cell, and an animal cell is what we call a eukaryotic cell, and I'll talk about what that word means in just a second. I want you to pause the video again, and I'd like you to draw this cell and label it for me. Okay, and let's go through the answers. So our first label is the ribosome. The second is the nucleus. The third is the cell membrane. The fourth is the mitochondria. And finally, we have the cytoplasm. Now, the five things you really need to know, certainly for the foundation GCSE paper and at Key Stage 3. Now, let's talk a little bit about what all of those things do. And just to remember that a eukaryotic cell, you for do, they do have a nucleus, and that'll be important later on. So a nucleus controls the entire cell, it's the boss. Imagine if the cell was a factory, it's the manager there. It contains genetic information or DNA, and that's why it controls our whole cell. The cell membrane, that controls what goes in and out of our cells, so things like oxygen, glucose, carbon dioxide, um, and that's by a few processes, osmosis, diffusion, and active transport, which I'll put in a later video. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance where chemical reactions happen. The mitochondria, that is where respiration happens. It's where energy for cell processes is released. And just to recap that equation for aerobic respiration is glucose plus oxygen, and it makes water and carbon dioxide. Ribosomes are our final one. It's where proteins are made. And uh, the fancy way to say that is protein synthesis. Think about photosynthesis, photo meaning light. Synthesis means put together. So it means it's putting proteins together. So that's an animal cell. We're going to look at our second type of eukaryotic cell, which is a plant cell. So same thing as before. I want you to pause the video. I want you to draw this cell and I want you to add the three new labels for me. Okay, so if we go through the answers, our first label is a cell wall and on the diagram it's labelled as a cellular cell wall. We'll talk about that in just a second. The next label is a vacuole and the final one are chloroplasts. Now, these things all do particular jobs. The first one being the cell wall, it's made up of cellulose and cellulose is what helps the cell stay strong, it strengthens the cell. Chloroplasts, they contain a green pigment called chlorophyll and that is used in photosynthesis. Without the chlorophyll, a plant cannot photosynthesize. This becomes relevant when you talk about certain plant diseases and how it restricts the uh, green area on a leaf, it means there's less area for photosynthesis. And finally, a vacuole. 
the vacuole is where water and cell sap is stored. It keeps the cell turgid, and turgid is just a fancy word for swollen. So you have two words that we'd use here, flaccid and turgid. Flaccid is when um, it's really shrunk in. It's not good at all for a plant cell. And that's when you tend to see plants that are wilted and not looking very healthy at all. OK, so I want you to pause the video again and answer these three questions for me. Okay. So let's go through the answers again. So what structures are found in both animal and plant cells? So there's five structures. The cell membrane, cytoplasm, nucleus, mitochondria and the ribosome. That leaves us three structures which are specific to plant cells and they are the vacuole, chloroplasts and the cell wall. Second question is why do muscle and sperm cells have lots of mitochondria? So think about what those things do. Your muscle cells are having to do a lot every time you move. Sperm cells have to swim an epic journey to do the function that they're adapted for. So that means that they need more energy, which they get from respiration that happens in the mitochondria organelles inside your cells. Finally, why do root hair cells not contain chloroplasts? Well, it's dark underground where roots are, so no light is actually getting to your roots. So there's no point in them having them because they can't actually photosynthesize. Okay, now the next type of cell is the complete opposite to our eukaryotic animal and plant cells. It's a bacteria cell and bacteria are what we call a prokaryotic cell. And prokaryotic means that they do not have a nucleus. You can remember it because pro uh, rhymes with no, so they do not have a nucleus. OK, so what I'd like you to do is pause the video again. I want you to draw this bacteria cell and add as many labels as you know to it. So let's go through the answers now. Remember that it's a prokaryotic cell, which means that it does not have a nucleus. And our first label is a cell wall. Now, a plant cell also has a cell wall, but that does not mean a bacteria cell is a plant cell. It has a cell membrane, just like our other two cells. A flagellum, which is a tail-like structure, which helps it to swim about. It also has the cytoplasm, like other cells, but it doesn't have a nucleus, so instead it has plasmids and a circle of DNA instead. And what those things are, um, are just genetic information. So bacteria cells have a single loop of chromosomal DNA that floats in the cytoplasm, and they sometimes have extra circles of DNA, which we call plasmids. Now again, what I'd like you to do is to pause the video. I want you to draw this table and to put a tick or a cross in the columns of the table. So if a nucleus is present in an animal cell, put a tick. If a cytoplasm is present, put a tick, etc. So pause the video now. OK, so going through our answers. Nucleuses are in a animal and a plant, but as we've just discussed, not in a bacteria cell. All three of our cells have a cytoplasm present, and all three have a cell membrane. Now, only an animal and a plant cell have a mitochondria. A bacteria cell doesn't because the mitochondria is actually bigger than a bacteria cell. Flagellum is only present in bacteria. Ribosomes are in all three. A cell wall is in a plant and a bacteria cell. Um, just to note again, the fact that bacteria is nothing like a plant cell, apart from having the cell wall, really. Uh, plasmids, only in bacteria, and they're the extra strands of circular DNA. A permanent vacuole is in a plant cell, and a chloroplast are also only in a plant cell. Now, our last bit to look at for cells is specialised cells. So some animal and plant cells have particular jobs and they have adaptations that help them carry that out. Now, as an organism develops, the cells become specialised, and the fancy way of saying that is differentiate. 
and they become special. In animal cells, this happens really early on. They acquire different structures so they can carry out certain jobs. In a mature animal like you and I, that only is used for growth and repair. And the fancy way we say that is mitosis, which some of you may already know about. In plants, it happens throughout their entire life. The meristem cells are, that are in the roots and the shoots of plants is where um, these undifferentiated cells are. So here we've got some examples of some specialised cells. We've got egg cells, nerve cells and a sperm cell. Now, they're all different from the animal cell that we drew earlier on in this lesson. And that's because they all have a stru specific structure that helps them to carry out its function. So these are some different types of specialised cells. We have the guard cells that are on the bottom of a leaf, red blood cells, nerve cell, a muscle cell, a palisade cell, which is the plant cell that we tend to draw. This is at the top of a leaf and where photosynthesis happens. We have a sperm cell, egg cell, a ciliated epithelial cell, which lines the airways, and a root hair cell, which is obviously on the roots of the plant. Okay. Now, the sperm cell. The job of a sperm cell is to carry the genetic information of the male to the female's egg cell. And it does that with its tail, which is full of lots of mitochondria at the top and that middle piece, which gives it lots of energy so that it's able to swim. It's got enzymes in its head, which is what's labeled as an acrosome. And what that does is digest the outer layers of an egg cell so that it's able to burrow in. Root hair cells, which we mentioned earlier, they are found on the surface of plant roots and they absorb water and mineral ions. Now, there's a way that they do this. They have a really large surface area, which means that they're able to increase the rate of absorption of water by osmosis. And they've got lots of mitochondria in there, which help with active transport um, to get mineral ions out of the soil and into the plant. The xylem and the phloem. Now, the xylem on this slide um, it's part of the transport tissue in a plant, a little bit like how in us we have our circulation system. In plants, they have the xylem and phloem that transport substances around instead. Now, the xylem have walls that are made of lignin and they are dead cells which provide strength and support to the plant. There's no end wall, so water is able to flow really easily through it. On the flip side, the phloem, is made of living cells, but they have these little sieve plates which let solutions move from cell to cell. And it's a two way flow. That means that the things that are made in the leaves during photosynthesis are able to be transported around the whole plant. So the final thing I'd like you to do, which is more of a extension exercise, is to go away and find out about these four types of cell. I want to know the function of them and I want to know what kind of adaptations they have to help them do that function. So, for example, a palisade cell, what does it have that helps it do its job? With the sperm cell we talked about earlier, we said that it has lots of mitochondria and that those mitochondria help give it the energy it needs to swim. So pause the video here, do the homework. You can tweet me answers if you like, or if you're one of my students, um, there's other ways that you know how to contact me. So good luck, stay safe, and thank you for tuning in.